Hello, this is Dan Perkins, Jasper County Soil and Water Cover Crop Guy, and I want to talk today about innovative cover crop seeding uh, techniques, particularly high clearance seeding into standing crops. And I want to talk about this because I spent all yesterday on a high clearance seeder in Jasper County, seeding into seed corn and then doing some dry run into field corn just to kind of see how it would uh, work on end rows and if it knocked down corn and um, I want to just share some of my experience with that as we try to promote cover crop seeding success and adoption in our area and across the state so hopefully this proves valuable for you here's my contact information um, if you need to get a hold of me or want to figure out more what we're about today I want to answer what is happening in general with cover crop seeding into Indiana with high clearance sprayers and these are the questions I'm getting from farmers are corn ears and stalks knocked down during seeding and you're talking about driving through 10 11 12 foot tall corn um, that can be pretty brittle uh, depending how much it's dried down how much loss from end row turning you know you're not you're not having any recovery that late in the season uh, when your corn gets knocked down um, and, and Typically, can your combine pick up those ears after getting knocked down that late? And then, do we have options for seeding the soybeans with these types of machines? So farmers are innovating um, all the time. I think they're some of the most innovative people on our, out in our countryside. And, you know, some are small scale with the tassellers. And this works, you know, if you're only trying to cover 40, 60 acres, small fields. Um, some are scaling up to cover more acreage faster, and um, if you have the equipment such as detasslers, you know, and you can do a low-cost conversion, then yeah, make use of what you have. Some others are taking old equipment um, or newer equipment, old haggy, and uh, really retrofitting it to work in their cropping systems. Um, some guys are going full bore, 120-foot booms, 90-foot booms, and really utilizing the equipment to go into tall corn and really get a lot of cover crops on acres fast. Uh, this is Mike Shooter in Frankton, Indiana. All these pictures are from Indiana or uh, right next door uh, close by. So he's taken his newer sprayer and converted it to have drop tubes on 30 inch centers um, and he's done this for a number of years. If you ever get a chance to get out to his farm he's, he's glad to have you there. So this is what it would look like running through uh, standing corn uh, that's quite dry actually in, in this picture for what we typically see in, in one of these devices. But ultimately this is what we want to end up with. A nice thick stand to cover crop, um, suppressing weeds, holding on to nitrogen, building organic matter before we even harvest our crop. And in northern Indiana if we're going to get good stands of cover crops with Anything other than cereal rye, this is kind of, we got to get it in pre-harvest. So some of the, the bigger innovations, you've probably all seen this picture of this um, high boy that can, has really been modified. And what I want to deal with today is the dry fertilizer that's rig that's typically used to put on urea. And what I've seen locally uh, in Jasper County um, with a rig like this. So here we are in seed corn, August 20th, 2013, and this rig is running about 8-9 miles per hour. We're putting on cereal rye and radish. Cereal rye at about 46 pounds to the acre, radish at about 3 pounds. And um, that corn, that boom, is set about 6.5-8 feet tall um, there. And here it is just filling, so just get another pitcher of the piece of equipment that's being used there and a lot of modifications uh, were done by this particular custom applicator based out of Carroll County and here's a group of the farmers um, I'm working with that were ooing and eyeing over it and just talking details which is just great and a lot of um, a lot of work this applicator said he, said he spent about a year and a half really designing this they did all their own welding um, and really changed a lot of the pumps and hydraulic drives to make this work. So they spent a lot of time on this. And here it is standing in the corn there. 
again, and this is actually seeding in this picture, putting on cereal and cereal rye and oats, and you can't actually see the seed coming out, um, but it comes out pretty, pretty fast. Um, here it is turning on the end rows, um, and so on seed corn, this is a no-brainer for cover crop use. Um, we could have even done this probably soon after detasseling um, and taking out the male rows even. So even getting a bigger jump on cover crop, a little too much. Um, I think we like to see maybe one or two radish, so maybe going at two and a half pounds to the acre for this particular rig would be a little more economical uh, because if you get your radish with a nice top growth really heavy, it's going to it's gonna grow faster than that cereal rye and shade it out. Um, and and we want we want an equal growth of both. So maybe cut back that rate a little bit. Here it is, um, it's starting to seed into seed corn again. And then here's the back of the rig just to kind of go over some basic components. It's basically got two drive belts, those two silver RK is written on one of them there. And it meters it out pretty evenly. Uh, this guy, he put in enough seed to run over 100 acres and we did 98 acres. So uh, pretty accurate um, seeding uh, with this type of uh, rig. And here's where the, really the custom welding came in to build those hydraulic lifts. Um, and that enables us to get about eight and a half feet clearance of total height on the underneath of that belly. Um, they did have it rigged up to go 10 feet, but that was just too high and too scary uh, being 14 feet high by the time you're in the cab and, and unnecessary really and then there's the drops one of the drop shoots where the cover crop seed actually comes out here's um, a front view as we're going through 10 foot tall pioneer corn so we took a drive through after doing the seed corn just to see how it would, it would behave in the corn um, here's driving from the top going forward in the rig and here's the boom height in the corn. So this is field corn and the boom height. What we, this custom applicator really likes to do is brush the tops of the tassels and bend the corn a little bit so that that spread on the ground of seed is uniform. It's not getting caught up in the whirls um, and it is, gets really good coverage that way. Um, this custom applicator spread 12,000 acres of cover crop seed last year. And here's just a view of what the corn looks like as it passes underneath the machine. So I was riding on the outside at this point. And here's it underneath the wheel, um, the back wheel. Um, it's not actually knocking over the corn, but it does um, bump it a little bit. So there's just another picture of what that looks like with the tire rolling. And here's after the spreader has driven through the corn and you can see the tire track there and you have the big thing here is no ears dropped off and no corn stalks knocked over and and i know that can be a concern with some hybrids but um, with spreading um, it's i think uh, going to do very minimal uh, loss of, of corn i mean i also notice this corn is starting to dry up just a little bit and you can see the amount of light that's in there so um, I have a couple theories about maybe seeding cover crops even earlier into standing uh, green corn uh, might be successful, particularly with high clearance rigs. So here, what's the, what's the question um, that I get the most is, what's the end row corn loss from turning? You know, if we can aerial apply this and we're going to suffer yield loss, why not just aerial apply it? Well, when we crunch the numbers, it's less than 0.25% of the yield per acre. And um, even, you know, on your end rows where you're turning, if you're lower, your combine head, I may, may be even able to pick up um, more of those ears that got crunched. And so how do we calculate that number? I know you're all wondering. Well, we went out in the tracks that it turned, and you can see the picture there. There's about two stalks flattened per tire track. So two to three, let's make it three. Um, and then we just hand counted the number of stalks that have um, were laying flat and would clearly be um, unharvestable. And so myself and a farmer counted a number of stalks down in one turn and we got 295. Um, I estimated based on a couple of rows, he actually counted them all and we came out about the same number. Um, 
let's assume one year has 450 kernels, 9, 3,000 kernels to one bushel average. So you do the math, and one turn of the machine on an end row, you're about losing a bushel and a half. Um, that's a realistic number. Now, let's apply that to the field level so we can know what that is per acre. You have a half mile long field row. It's a typical, you know, average size field. Um, so you've got 3.6 acres per turn that you're covering with this 60 foot boom that we're dealing with here. One and a half bushel loss per 3.6 acres. So that's 0.41 bushel loss per acre. So that's where we get that 0.25% of yield per acre. 0.23 loss per acre. At $5 a bushel for corn, uh, you've basically got a $2 an acre loss. That's, that's what we're looking at um, realistically. So if all things being equal, if the cost of the seeding with a high clearance is $2 cheaper than whatever alternative seeding method there is, then you go with the high clearance, right? Um, so that's just kind of a real mathematical way to look at it. Then it just becomes a question of what your field conditions are and what you're trying to seed and what your goals are with cover cropping in terms of um, what piece of equipment you use. And that, that's going to be very farmer to farmer. But this is just documenting that high clearance can be viable um, and you're not going to get corn knocked down or significant yield loss. Because when you balance this with what is your yield gain in your next season crop from using cover crops, it's certainly more than um, that uh, $2 an acre gain uh, is what we're seeing. Um, but that, that's going to vary for each farm. So we also, the, one of the questions that we wanted to answer is, what about soybeans? Could we use this rig to seed in soybean acres? Um, here, and so we drove through a little section of soybeans, and based on this particular custom applicator's experience, he didn't really favor it, but if a grower was interested in running 90 degrees or perpendicular to the soybean row, um, would actually cause a lot less damage um, overall, and um, you could really get a good coverage with your seed because in my experience of four years of cover cropping, aerial seeding into soybeans is just kind of a, it, it, we get the least amount of good stand establishment. And that's having to do with when those soybeans dry down and just how fast they do and um, how close the rows are. It, it's just not as reliable as corn. So maybe with high clearance, we can be a little more timely with that. So here, um, August 20th, we drove through. So there's the wheel track. Um, the next day I went out in the morning, took a picture, and essentially you're losing one plant, maybe two plants underneath that um, so we, that wheel. So the canopy closes over nicely, um, and you know if you're seeding before leaf drop, um, you know your yield's already set, so you'd be having some loss, but I imagine it'd be similar to the corn calculation. Have to run those numbers yet. Like I said, we're all learning here. So here's my contact information again, and here's the contacts folks I have talked to that use high clearance seeders in Indiana. Um, here's their websites or phones. You know, if you live near them, want to try it out, I encourage you to try 40 acres um, and and see what happens. And for this, just for your information, this custom applicator charged ten dollars an acre pre-harvest, and then after harvest, he charges six dollars an acre. Um, and he'll go in and just seed that at 9, 10 miles per hour and um, you can either wait for a rain or VT it in or um, have some sort of incorporation method. Uh, is, is a, could be a viable option depending on where you're at and what cover crop you're using. So they don't just have to be used in standing crops, which I thought was pretty innovative. Again, Dan Perkins, Jasper County Cover Crop Guy. Thanks for listening.